question that you probably uh, were not expecting. Okay. Does President Biden want to limit Americans to two beers a week? I, I, where is this coming from? It's maybe coming. I did. Maybe I didn't miss you so much. Where is this? Where is this coming from? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Dr. George Koob, who is the uh, director of the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, oh. says the U.S. may soon follow Canada and recommend just two beers a week. How do you guys think that's going to go? Let me tell you what I'm not going to get involved in. In uh, in that in that question right there, I I have no idea. I've not seen the data. Uh, I cannot speak to this. Uh, I will leave it to the experts and not weigh so in. So the experts say two beers a week. I that's okay I, I, will, I, will, I will leave it to the experts. I'm just not going to comment on. Okay. Are hoodies going out of style on the Senate floor? The Senate unanimously approved a resolution to arrange a formal dress code requiring senators to wear proper business attire, including ties for men. This comes a week after Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer loosened the informal dress code to permit senators to wear more casual attire on the floor. Approval of the bipartisan resolution comes after the shorts and hoodie clad Senator John Fetterman inspired sartorial accommodations earlier this month from Democratic leaders. It is going to be the last American election that will be decided by ballots rather than bullets. Mike Huckabee made an extreme prediction about 2024 when discussing the possibility of Donald Trump losing or being prevented from running due to his legal troubles. In a recent segment on his Trinity Broadcast Network series, the former Arkansas governor suggested the four sets of criminal charges Trump is facing are an attempt to keep him from office, comparing the tactics used to those in third world dictatorships. And if you're not paying attention, you may not realize that Joe Biden is using exactly those tactics to make sure that Donald Trump is not his opponent in 2024. We also have established the most comprehensive plan to implement. We call it the great implementation, our ambitious goals and advance our low carbon green growth future. I say all of that very mindful that if you read the newspaper or turn on your TV, that you see a state uh, not just of dreamers or doers, but you see a state that's burning up, a state that's choking up, a state that's heating up with wildfires and floods and droughts. This climate crisis is a fossil fuel crisis. This climate crisis persists for decades and decades. The oil industry has been playing each and every one of us in this room for fools. I want to see if I got the point here. A public library is supported by public dollars. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Are you telling taxpayers of this country just shut up? Uh, is all you worry about is your kids don't have a voice about how your taxpayer dollars are being spent and what kind of community you're living in here? Because you're a parent and you don't let your three dollars read something, is it possible that the other things that the books in question may hurt the community in the eyes of parents. Can a parent, a taxpayer, complain under this theory? Or should they just shut up? Uh, I would make the exact argument you are. This is about um, parents no, making decisions. No, we're not making the same argument. My argument is you just said, if you've got kids, you police your kids. Otherwise, just shut up and trust the library system, the school system, let them decide for your community. I completely, totally reject that. If you, I don't have any kids, should I shut up? I pay taxes. When you have a public library and you have a board, somebody decides what books to go in or what not to go in, lend your voice to the cause. It's okay to speak out. We have seen, heard, and read about instances where uh, right-wing groups, extremist groups, are trying to shut down or censor a certain book, access to certain books, which is why, again, our legislation is so very important, to protect librarians and their ability to determine what books belong in circulation. I, I'm saddened that uh, Chairman, or that uh, Senator Graham left. He didn't give me a chance to respond. And this whole notion that protecting the right to read and fighting against censorship is somehow anti-parent is one of the most ludicrous arguments I've ever heard. So today we grieve. We look at that desk and we know what we have lost. But we also give thanks 
thanks to someone so rarefied, so brave, so graceful a presence served in this chamber, for so, that someone like that served in this chamber for so many years. In closing, let me just say this. The sign of a leader is someone who dedicates the whole of their spirit for a cause greater than themselves. The sign of a hero is someone who fights for others, who endures for others, no matter the cost, no matter the odds. And the sign of a friend is someone who stands by your side to fight the good fight on the good days and on the bad. Diane Feinstein was all of this and more. A friend, a hero for so many, a leader who changed the nation, sorry, a leader who changed the nature of the Senate and who changed the fabric of the nation, America. If you didn't watch the debate, here are takeaways from a face-off that had a few feisty moments, lots of confusing crosstalk, and not one, but two mentions of sleeping with teachers. First, everyone talked over one another, and it definitely had desperation vibes. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Excuse me. Thank you for speaking while I'm interrupting. While I'm speaking. The night seems better suited for an episode of The Real Housewives than a presidential race. And at one point, the debate moderators even threatened to cut off one candidate's microphone if he didn't stop interrupting everybody. Sir, we, we, we will have to cut your mic, and I don't want to do that. The debate also took a bizarre turn when Chris Christie said that President Joe Biden is, quote, sleeping with a member of the teachers' union. To be clear, First Lady Jill Biden is a teacher, and Christie was trying to make the point that uh, the government can't uh, wrestle away the, quote, stranglehold that the teachers' union has when uh, President Biden supports them. The comment also prompted former Vice President Mike Pence to chime in. My wife uh, isn't a member of the teachers' union, but I got to admit, I've, I've been sleeping with a teacher for 38 years. They say with age comes wisdom. And I think it's time for guys like me to get out of the way and have people in the next generation step forward. But while that wisdom has its limits, the age maximum of the House, Senate, and Presidency does not. How old is too old to keep valuable government secrets? 81-year-old Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky froze last month for a second time when asked his thoughts on running for re-election. Take a look. What are your thoughts on running for re-election in 2026? What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. That's good. Uh... Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? Yes. All right, I'm sorry, you all, we're gonna need a minute. I've spent my last 25 years in public service of one kind or another. At the end of another term, I'd be in my mid 80s. Frankly, it's time for a new generation of leaders. Former President Donald Trump is set to go to court for a baker's half dozen of alleged crimes and misdeeds. Yep, a cool seven. For a normal person who can maybe keep only one to five court cases in mind at once, staying on top of all of these legal proceedings is getting confusing. So here's what you need to know about all of Trump's upcoming court dates. First up are the criminal cases. On March 4th, 2024, Trump is being tried for trying to overturn the 2020 election results. Mere weeks after this trial, on March 25th, 2024, he is said to be tried in New York for paying porn actress Stormy Daniels hush money to keep quiet her claim that the pair had had sex. Criminal trials pick back up on May 20th, when the former president will be tried for indiscretions, including keeping sensitive documents related to national security at his Florida estate and hiding documents requested by prosecutors. The final criminal case, which will try Trump for election interference in Georgia during the 2020 election, is yet to have a date set. On January 15th, 2024, advice columnist E. Jean Carroll's defamation case against Trump will be tried in court. And then finally, last but not least, Trump will be tried on January 29th, 2024, for allegedly promoting pyramid schemes that conned consumers into spending money on companies he was invested in. Has taken place here is a travesty of justice. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. Welcome back, everyone. You know, in the months that we were gone, in the weeks, House Republicans have uncovered serious and credible allegations into President Biden's conduct. These are allegations of abuse of power, obstruction, and corruption. And they warrant further investigation by the House of Representatives. That's why today, I am directing our House committee 
to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. On this vote, the yeas are 335, the nays are 91, two-thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. The question is on the motion to adjourn. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Accordingly, the House stands adjourned until noon on Monday, October 2nd, 2023, for morning hour debate. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Kevin McCarthy is no longer Speaker of the House after losing the majority in a House vote. For better or for worse, McCarthy's term was historic. He had one of the longest confirmations in U.S. history, one of the shortest tenures in his position, and now is the first person to ever get voted out of the job. He only lasted nine months. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I hope you realize that every day I did the job, regardless whether you underestimated me or not, I wanted to do it with a smile. But as I walk out of this chamber, I feel fortunate to have served the American people. You all know Matt Gates. You know it was personal. Everything he accused somebody of, he was doing. It all was about getting attention from you. 